Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for this new webinar. Today I'm joined by Jonathan Reeves. I will let him introduce himself. He will present uh, how to import your Vectorworks project inside Twinmotion using the new Datasmith technology that is natively inside uh, the new version of Vectorworks. So yeah, he will present that. And after that, I will uh, walk you through some tips and tricks using the animators inside Twinmotion and also show you how to create some kind of diagram type of rendering. So yeah, let's uh, let's start first with the Vectorworks part, uh, the Vectorworks part. And now uh, up to you, Jonathan. Hi everybody and welcome. Jonathan Reeves here. Thank you, Martin, for the introduction. I'd like to just carry on with a little introduction before we get started into the demonstration and talk about how we're going to work with Vectorworks and Twinmotion. So basically, the goals of this presentation really are to understand the benefits of using Vectorworks for Twinmotion together for real-time rendering. We're going to understand and learn how to export the Vectorworks files to Twinmotion really effortlessly and I'm also going to demonstrate using Twinmotion on some scenes and show you how to get some really amazing results in absolutely record time. So just a tiny bit of information about myself. Um, my name is Jonathan Reeves. I've set up Jonathan Reeves Architects back in 2000. I'm a practicing architect in the UK, but I also have 20 years experience both as a Vectorworks and Twinmotion teacher and trainer as well. I'm also a top reseller for Vectorworks and Twinmotion in the UK. And finally, I'd like to say I'm an author now. I'm writing a currently book on Twinmotion, Revolutionize Your Rendering with Twinmotion. I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots of that later. Also, I did a book a few years ago called Innovative Vectorworks BIM. So I do enjoy writing. It's great fun. Um, where am I based? I'm based right in the middle of the UK for anybody watching around the world. Here we are in England and I'm right in the middle of the country, just a couple of hours from London, so not too far. And basically I've got three websites if you're interested, realtimerendering.com, uh, Jonathan Reeves Architects and my Vectorworks CAD one. Excellent. Okay, so um, in terms of experience, I've been using Vectorworks for over 20 years myself and Twinmotion since it came out on the Mac. But I like to kind of just remind myself of where I started. This was an image that I created as a master's uh, student back at Sheffield University, <laughs> believe it or not, in 1995. And I do remember at the time it took three weeks to model and the rendering time was about 72 hours for a 640 by 480 pixel, very pixelated as you can see, low quality image. But I have to say I was hooked and I was really, really pleased with the way I created this three dimensional image. So I like to think I'm an early adopter of 3D rendering. And these days I have to try and say I use Twinmotion most days if I get the chance, um, certainly on most projects. So things have come on a long, long way and that's what you're gonna see today. Um, just before we jump in, I just wanted to also highlight that I do professional online teaching and training at all levels, globally, online. We also have a fantastic training facility in Loughborough. We're hoping to get up and running a bit more once COVID sort of eases off a bit here. And this is here ready and waiting. You can see got all the global times here, so it's fantastic. Over the years, I've probably worked with over 600 companies and maybe 9,000 individuals, just a rough estimate as a teacher and a trainer as well. So I'd be very pleased to work with any of you guys if you're interested. And finally, um, if you would like to see some examples of my work and get some free training, check out my YouTube channel, Jonathan Reeves CAD. And um, we're doing quite well. We've got nearly 10,000 subscribers now, hoping to get that this year. So please sign up and subscribe. We'd love to see you on the channel. There's loads of videos here on both Vectorworks, Twinmotion, and a few other things as well. Uh, so that's really exciting. So yeah, come and check out that for free training. The final thing I'm really excited to talk about just briefly is my Revolutionize Your Rendering with Twinmotion. It's a new book that's in the final stages of production, be coming out soon both in hard copy and also ebook so we can easily distribute this around the world. Um, it's a fantastic book. It's got loads of information about all the features of Twinmotion with some beautiful screenshots and nice project examples. But one of the things I'm most excited about, I've reached out and been really fortunate enough to get contributions from some of the best artists and uh, featured firms in the world who are using Twinmotion. And if you're familiar with Twinmotion, you'll know the work of Paul Rimza, an amazing ArchViz enthusiast, does some incredible work. 
and also th people like Anne Pham who have done the uh, sort of loading screen for Twin Motion via the Twin Motion Competition Challenge. So we've got some fantastic people in there. So do uh, let me know if you're interested in getting a copy of that, and when it's available, I'll let you know. Like everybody, so let's get started with this VectorWorks and Twin Motion webinar. Now, I'm going to show you a project that I've been working on for a while. In fact, I've just recently got planning for a new eco home in the UK. Um, here you can see it without the site. And basically, it's just a nice, simple model in Vectorworks, structured with a few design layers that I can turn on and off to help me visualize my project. You can see it's actually got quite a bit of furniture in the design already, which is great. And this is one of the real strengths of Vectorworks as a visualization tool. Okay, so when I'm ready, um, all I need to do to see this in Twin Motion is go to my visualization tab. And you'll notice it in the new Vectorworks 2022, we've got a Datasmith Direct Link tool. So when you click onto the tool, there's not many options. All you need to do is go up into the settings and probably just change that maybe to medium or high if you've got any curves in your model and you want that geometry to come through nice and smooth. Okay, so this is fantastic. So when I'm ready, I just click onto the Direct Sync button and that will start the process of exporting the Datasmith link. So it takes a few moments to export and basically we'll just leave that running for a second. You can see it's already prompted us to say the direct link has gone through. So if I actually go to Twin Motion now, the very first time we do need to click and set this up. So all we need to do is click onto the import button and the beauty is if we go to direct link here, you'll notice that my Vectorworks file is now linked as the source. Okay, that's great. So there's a couple of little settings just to draw your attention to. Um, these little settings indicate how the model uh, works in Twin Motion. And the one that I tend to use is Keep Hierarchy, which keeps all the Vectorworks native objects as they are in Vectorworks. So it's pretty rapid. You can see that we've now processed. If we open up the scene graph on the other side, click onto our model and click F to fit, suddenly we can actually sort of fit to our model in Twin Motion. And you can see it pretty much looks as it should in Vectorworks. So this is really nice little process. So the lovely thing is we can go on and enhance our model in Twin Motion, which we'll do in a second. But if we do need to go back and change the design, all we need to do is click back onto Vectorworks. For example, let's just pretend we're turning these other layers on. I could make other changes to the doors or anything like that as well. But let's just click ahead on the Direct Sync button. Let it re-export if you like, only takes a few moments and that's pretty rapid the second time. This is gonna take a bit longer because obviously there's all the new data that I just turned on of the other floors. We'll just let that go through, click back into Twin Motion. That's already almost finished. Um, so obviously if I had split screen or dual screens, I could put it onto both screens and work with both apps at the same time. So that's really, really nice. And what you're gonna notice is the, um, should we say, the layer structure that we had in Twin Motion has still come through. So if I did want to go and turn off these individual layers, I could still do that. And that's a really nice aspect to the software. I can change the lighting, sort of swing through the time of day and so on. Um, and you'll see how we can kind of work with this model in a lot more detail. So that's really just taking through the new feature of the direct syncing. And it does mean that we can make lots and lots of design changes to our model really, really rapidly. So what I'm gonna do now is just open up a file I've been working on for a bit longer and just show you more features of Twin Motion itself. Okay, everybody, so um, here is the project in the context, actually in Vectorworks, in the sort of site model, as it were. And again, all I've done here is just created a site with some context around and put some nice trees in, but you can see it sort of sits rather nicely. Now the beauty of the Vectorworks side is I can create a really nice set of set of drawings, both including things like site plans, um, rendered site plans, floor plans as well, of all descriptions, and also things like rendered plans. But what we're really gonna focus on in this webinar is how to really enhance your Vectorworks models using Twin Motion. So these are the uh, sections I created, they look really nice. So in terms of sort of graphical properties, no problem, Vectorworks can do some really, really nice work. But let's have a look at how this model works in Twin Motion and see what we can do with that. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to my Twin Motion file again. And you can see that I've now imported the site into Twin Motion itself. Now, the beauty of Twin Motion, um, for some of you who've not seen it, just to briefly run through, 
is that we have a fantastic library of very, very realistic things like trees and plants and things. So what I'm actually going to do is just go back to my beginning of my project and basically show you how to drag those in. Click onto the trees and basically let's go and select. You can see there's a really nice library here. Try and get something that's obviously going to fit into your local context. And all you need to do is drag and drop those items in. Now, if they come in a bit big, that's great. You can just scale them down. You'll notice actually the tree scales. There's different types of tree as it scales. So it's not just a scaled version. It's actually different sort of sizes and it's quite realistic. So dragging in things like trees and plants into your project is going to make things a lot nicer just to give it some really good context. You can see that's pretty much what I've done with all the boundaries in Twinmotion here. The other thing you'll notice is the things like the leaves and things blow in the wind, which is lovely. Okay, so we can also add in quite a bit more context in terms of um, things like grass and so on as well. So let's just show you briefly how this works. I'm going to go to my vegetation paint tool. What I'm going to do is load in a few different types of grass into this dock down at the bottom. And if I select this dock, these items, get my paintbrush, then what I can do is adjust the size of my brush here. And I can just sort of really kind of rapidly, you know, just sort of paint essentially on any surface um, a mixture of those plants. Now you can see they're really nice high quality. It's quite rapid to do. What I really like though is I can actually click afterwards and change the density of each individual type of plant within that mix. And if I really wanted to, I could even go down, maybe let's drag in uh, some flowers into the mix. And you can see, that's quite a lot of them. Let's just reduce the intensity there a bit. So you can see it's a really nice way to add lots and lots of detail into your project. And I'll show you a bit more of that later on. Okay, so let's do a bit more work on this. Um, let's go back to our libraries over on this side. We'll go to vehicles. Twinmotion comes with a fantastic library of vehicles. What's really nice about all of these is, again, you can just change the colours of those to suit. Let's bring in just one more maybe. Um, here we go, just bring that one in. And this time what I'll do is I'll just click and rotate it around so we can sort of see it from the other angle. And again, let's just change the colour of that one. Let's go for something a bit brighter. Excellent. So, okay, we've got some context added there. Let's bring the model to life a bit more now. So we'll go back to our libraries. We'll go to the object libraries and we'll just have a quick look at some of the external things that we can add. So we're going to go to home, tables, and I think what we're going to do is drag in a little table here. Let's go to our plants. Here we go. Let's drag in a few items in. Now, if you, if you would like to drag more than one, you can select more than one. And basically what Twinmotion will do is actually kind of choose randomly each one. So that can be quite a nice way to work. Or um, you can basically just click on the specific one you want. And every time you click, you'll get another one of those. And then finally, just to bring this to life, um, I think we're going to go down and add a few characters. So there's two types of characters that Twinmotion comes with. Um, the animated ones, which I really like. As soon as you click and drop those into the scene, and you can see they basically move and perform sort of different animations. What's really nice is you can actually change that. So for example, if I wanted him sitting, uh, standing, speaking on the phone or having a drink, that's it, all I need to do. Let's give him someone to chat to. Let's drag in uh, Alice here and pop her around. And you can see, let's have her having a drink as well. And just sort of move her to an appropriate spot. Now, as you add these into Twinmotion, they all get added on this side. So you can easily sort of manage the visibilities as required. And you'll see I've actually got a few other layers hidden away uh, just to show you a bit later on as I need to. Now, if you do want to actually change the textures in Twinmotion, that's another important aspect. All you need to do is click onto the te uh, Texture Picker tool, or T, sample the texture. Now, this is the material that came in directly from Vectorworks. So if I click, you'll see that I can kind of, to some extent, colorize it a little if I really wanted to, change the tones and the hues and the saturations. 
Um, I can lighten and darken it as well. But of course, if I really, really wanted to, I could actually just go back to my materials and choose something a bit different altogether. Let's go for some concrete. See if there's any sort of nice tiles in here. I'll just try something out, see how it looks. Poured concrete, let's make it a bit more reflective and I can change the scale of that as well. Now, one really amazing aspect of Twin Motion as well is as well as its fantastic library system, you do actually get access to the Quixel Mega Scans. Now, if you've not seen these before, these are incredible. So basically we can click onto these, we can go to either 3D assets and bring in things, and there's all sorts of props and things like this. Um, not quite sure what I'm looking for here, but you can see there's bits of firewood and so on. Um, let's go back to our surfaces and we'll go to some concrete here. And let's go for some nice, uh, what should we do? Let's go for some smooth concrete. There's quite a lot of libraries here. Now, if I'd like to access these, all I need to do is sign in to Epic Games using my Epic Games account. Once that's agreed or completed, then basically I will have access to any of these materials and textures. Um, so let's go and choose something uh, nice. Let's try this one, give it a go. All I need to do is click on the download button. Just wait for a second while it downloads itself. And then that means it will be available for me to drag into my model. So let's drag it in. Just while it loads in the very first time, it has to process. So it takes a few seconds. And these are downloading off the cloud. That's why they take a second or two. Um, but you can see they're really nice quality and you know again you still get the option to sort of things like change the reflection maps and the scale of those as well so with the quixel mega scans um i think it's a fantastic resource it opens up a massive library of things for you to have a look at there's lots of really nice kind of rustic sort of damaged and kind of their uh, grungy type textures so really really good for sort of gaming and things but yeah, just look at the amount of libraries here. They're just phenomenal, absolutely incredible. And each one opens up to be uh, more and more sophisticated as well. So I'll just bring one more in. Let's just bring in an object. It's not particularly the appropriate one, but just to show you the process really. Click onto the download. Just wait a second or two for it to download. And then once we've got it, we can just bring it in, click on the target and it will process and then load in this mega scan directly from the Quixel Mega Scans library. So it's very, very straightforward and a really, really powerful. Once you've loaded it in once, you can see you can load it in multiple times uh, very rapidly. Excellent. So really, really nice feature. OK, so what we're going to do now with our project is we've you know just shown you how you can kind of enhance it. And if I did want to, let's just kind of get inside. You can see um, there's a few things going on inside. I've got some Vectorworks furniture in here already. And you can see I can basically load in uh, more furniture here and essentially go through my lighting and change the time of day. Now you don't do it through here, you go through this aspect here, you go to lighting. I can either change the brightness and so on as well. If I want to change the time of day, then all I need to do is go to location and swing through the different times of the day. Look at that, it looks fantastic just to sort of show the clients how that works. Okay, so we've had a quick look at how we can add more props and materials and objects to our model using the Twin Motion and also the Megascans library. We've had a look at also adding things like characters as well. Just touch on a couple of other things. There's some groups. Um, so if you're really adding a lot of people to your project, those work really well. And finally, if you've got some really nice sort of close up visuals, then I really recommend using the uh, posed people the post people are even higher quality and they look really, really fantastic once you render those in stills. They don't move around or anything, but these are excellent for still images. Okay, good. Now, the other aspect of Twin Motion that's really, really fantastic is just the ability to show the client how you can modify the lighting. So when you're actually within an image, as I am here, you don't do it from this element here, which is where you normally do it. You have to quit media mode to do that. So if I go to more, go to location now i can slide through the times of the day just in real time and just sort of visualize that sort of course of that day okay so i just wanted to show you briefly the lighting in twin motion as well and this is one of the aspects of the software that i really really like uh, a lot it's just very intuitive the way you can sort of drag and drop you'll see it sort of snaps to different surfaces as you do that 
So what's really nice is I can select those lights, I can kind of change the brightness of them all in one go. I could have duplicated them as well. Uh, let's change the tonal values and maybe those angles. So that looks really, really nice. Now I don't need those additional lights because I think I've actually got a light folder. If I click G, let's select my light here. You can see uh, previously to just prepare for this, I've actually created lots of nice internal lighting for you, which I can turn on and off. Okay, so you can see how rapidly we can take off Ettowitz model and we can start to really kind of visualize this in a lot more detail. So the final part of this presentation I want to show you is really how we kind of review our media and create images. Now you can see down at the bottom on the media dock, I've already got lots of images created. Uh, but just to show, show you how that works, let's kind of move to a new spot here. That's a nice little view. And all I need to do is click create image. And you can see that's now added that one up there. Let's just drag that up to the front here for review. So I can go back to my original one and I can drag to this one. So what we'll do is we'll change the time of day for this one. We'll go to location. Let's just change the time of day. You can see it's very, very easy to do. That's quite nice with those sort of shadows coming across. And then I'll go to more. I'll also go to lighting. And here I've got all sorts of more detailed settings about things like exposure levels, um, shadow intensity, so I can change those shadows, let's harden those up a bit. So you'll find that most of the deeper settings are, you know, available, um, but you actually don't need a lot of those to get the job done. So definitely something to explore, but on the, you know, simplicity side, Vectorworks, or should we say Twinmotion, has this available. Now the vignetting is nice, you can just sort of introduce a bit of vignetting. And finally, I really love parallelism. It's something that I really wish Vectorworks had, but the ability to have nice verticals. So it's kind of looking really nice. I'm pretty happy with that scene. If I've made a few tweaks or changes, maybe tweak the view slightly, it's going to come back out. All I need to do is click update. Excellent. So that's how you set the media up. And you can see that I've got a few for review here that I've done a bit more work on. Um, I love the fact that each view uh, can be tweaked. That's a really nice little view. Let's just do that and update and so on. I can also render using um, some of my internal views. Let's turn those internal lights on and off. And just come back to those. That's pretty bright, those lights. And you'll see that I've got some internals. I've also got some stylized renders. And these are really easy to do with Twinmotion as well, using kind of the white card model look. So I definitely would like to show you how to do that in other webinars as well. But finally, I love things like the ability to change the weather. And clearly all I've done here, I've gone to weather you see that I've gone from sort of sunny through to winter. When I'm in the winter season, snow starts to fall, or should we say rain starts to turn into snow. So really, really nice little atmospheric night shot here with a bit of light coming out as well into my project. Now these are things that, you know, you couldn't do in Vectorworks, but the beauty is having these models linked to my Vectorworks file means I can still keep working on the design and using the direct sync, I can just click update to bring those back in. Okay, so the final couple of things I really wanted to show you before I hand over uh, to Martin in a minute is the fact that we can do something called, uh, well, we can do videos for a start. I'll just show you quickly a video. So here's a little video clip. All I've done here is created some keyframes and I can just play through those in real time. That's one of the beauties with Twinmotion is the speed. As long as you have a decent graphics card, um, it can basically cope with really nice sort of quality of animation in real time, kind of in the green, which is okay. I could drop the uh, quality level down a bit as well. Now, Twinmotion runs on Mac and PC, which is also fantastic. Um, I'm on my PC today, but I do love to use it on my MacBook Pro with an external graphics card, and it runs really, really well. But at any time, I can kind of get into my model and view it and interrogate it as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just review a few other things and I really want to show you just before we finish and hand over to Martin, the presenter. Now, Twinmotion Presenter is a totally unique way that you can basically create like a PowerPoint in Twinmotion and all you need to do to do this is start a new presenter and basically click plus and basically choose any media that you would like to drag down. So I can drag those down and kind of order them in any order that sort of seems sensible. 
you see a spotlight one there. I can also drag down any video clips that I've created. And you can see I've got a little nice little presentation here that I've built already with a number of key views. Now, once I've built my presenter file, as well as actually kind of looking at it here, I can suddenly go to full screen presentation. So what I find myself doing with clients is basically going through to these views. And what's really, really cool is uh, I've basically got a phasing diagram where I can actually show the different phases of construction and basically set up my project. So here's the, the last phase, can you see? And then it was actually just showing a bit more how it might be constructed in the process. This is just a big, quick, basic example, but it's really, really nice, really fun to do and really, really rapid. So at any stage I can just rewind. So each of those images has the phasing capability. Let's just keep it on that one for now and just review those images. Now I can go around full screen as well and I still have the ability to explain to the client, you know, things like the lighting or I can just sort of change through the time of day and show them in real time how that will respond to the particular environment that they're in. So it's such a wonderful presentation tool and design tool and I love the way you can show different sort of atmospheres of evening as well as in the daytime. So for me, Twin Motion is just a brilliant enhancement to my beloved Vectorworks uh, design tool. I think it's an incredible presentation tool with lots and lots of really exciting opportunities and basically really, really love the way you can work with them. Okay, so we're coming towards the end of the presentation. So when we're ready, we can click onto the Export tab. And one of the lovely things with Tremotion is you see a preview of all of your images. So any of these you would like to select, you can click and you can basically load in all the videos, panoramics and images that you've got and export those at the same time. Now I'm actually not actually gonna do that right now, but I will show you that I've also got the ability to go to my presenter. And with presenter, I can actually export that as a standalone file, or I can actually export it to the Twinmotion cloud, which I've already done. Okay, so let's just kind of have a quick look at cloud for a second. We'll just deselect that for now. So all I need to do, I've already exported it because it does take a few moments, is go file to the sign in menu, go open cloud. And here we can see, uh, here is my presenter file that I've been playing around with. That's it, it's all here. So if I'm ready, I can share this with the client by clicking on a link or I can click view and just load this in on the cloud. Now, the real beauty of the cloud is that all the processing is done um, online, if you like, rather than needing a copy of Twinmotion. So we'll just let this load in. Okay, so you can see I'm in the web browser and I'm viewing my file in the cloud. So this is really nice. I still have access to the different phasing requirements. That's really, really cool. Let's just go through to the last phase. I can still move around and navigate around. In fact, the client can do this or anybody I've shared the model with. Um, and you can do this on both an iPad and computer as well. So it's a really nice aspect to being able to share your files. And you can see over here on this side, I've still got access to my little views. And again, once again, just love that presentation feature. It's quite fun just to sort of show how the construction process could work. So really, really nice way to share your projects with clients and stakeholders. And it really just means that anything that you develop in Vectorworks is really easy to share on, on the cloud like this um, with the potential for virtual reality capabilities as well. So I definitely think it's something you should look into. Um, it's a really nice way to communicate your designs and your projects. You still have the ability to go in and do things like change the lighting and the time of day. So really all the capabilities that you have in Twinmotion are now available in the cloud itself. So what a fantastic new addition to the tool sets. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Martin Kreisman, who's gonna do a fantastic demonstration of some really nice things that he's gonna show with the Vectorworks model. So really thanks for watching. I um, really hope you follow me on YouTube and I look forward to hearing from you if I can help any further. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the presentation with Martin. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jonathan. So here I just grabbed Jonathan's file and the first thing I wanted to do with this file is maybe first I start to add a bit more animation. 
So here I switch to uh, the street level, the street side, and I wanted to animate that gate. Here, as you can see, the object is detached from the rest of the project. So I can use um, pretty easily add an animator that will uh, trigger the opening of that gate. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the library, enter the tools uh, option. I will go to the animator, translator. And here, as you can see, there is already a gate, but I prefer to start from scratch. So what I will do is simply drag and drop my default animator. As you can see here, uh, the blue line tell you that the object will move up. So it's not exactly what we want now. I will press tab on my keyboard to switch to the rotate gizmo. You can also click here, hold your mouse and switch from the move to the rotate tool. From here, now I can rotate my object. So let me just rotate it 90 degrees like that. So here my gate, uh, my gate should slide through the left. So what I will do here is uh, make sure my uh, rotation, um, my blue line is facing the correct direction. I can rotate it manually like that. But what I can also do is just when I mouse over, as you can see, there is the small box that is um, highlighted and I can just type a value 180 degrees. And now uh, the blue line will be facing the opposite direction. And now what I can simply do is using my link tool, I can link my uh, gate to my animator. And now, as you can see, it's already moving. I still need to change a few things. Right now, the animation is set to ping pong, so it will move the object. Uh, it will move the object, and it will come back to its original position. So it's not exactly what I want. What I want is to have it move once. It will only move once when it is triggered. So I need to activate the trigger area over here. So here, right now, it's not trigger anymore. So as you can see here, the door, the, the gate won't be opening. Let me check the uh, trigger radius. Right now it's 3 meters. When I raise the value here, as you can see, you can see where it starts to open uh, the gate. So for example, here I want to open when my camera arrive on uh, this part of the road over here. And note, I don't want to uh, every pass, every vehicle that will drive down the road, I don't want them to uh, to trigger the opening of the gate. So I will just leave it somewhere like that. That means that now if I start to whoop, advance toward my project, it will trigger the opening of the gate. So that's the first way you can a bit bring a bit more animation to the project. Now let's see how it looks in some windows and, and some big doors around the main part of the project. So now what I want to show you is how to animate those doors, as you can see here. Uh, let me just first select one of them. If I select them, as you can see here, I have the window, the glazing that is separated from uh, the, um, the framing of the window. And actually, there is also another part of the framing. It's because of the hierarchy and how it was created with Vectorworks. But there is no problem. We can work with that too. So let me come back to my tools, animators, translators. I will drag and drop my translator again. First thing I'm going to do is 90 degree to, uh, uh, so it's just sliding in, it's not moving up in the air. As you can see also here, it just probably, yeah, something like that should be uh, sliding well. Also, there is four doors, four windows here that will slide. So I will first do that on the first one and then we'll duplicate the animator and I will show you all the process. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've placed my animator. What I will do is link the different objects. So there is first the glazing, then there is the first part of the frame, and then there is that second part of the frame. So now I have selected all the items. And if I look at it at in my scene graph, if I open my translator here, I have all the three different objects that has been added as a child of my translator. So that's the first step. 
Now let's actually uh, put that the put the door in its correct position when it's uh, moved completely back on the right. So let's uh, to do that. What I can do is making sure that the animation is triggered and is set to once, and also that the radius is big enough so it take my camera like that. So here it will play the animation once and it will pause it. That's fine because we want to change the max distance. Yep. So it should be probably around 3 meters, maybe a bit too big. Oh no, maybe not even. 3.5, let's say 4. 4 should be enough. So that's for the first door. Yep. Now if I move my camera away, my door will come back to its its original state. So let's now, I will select my uh, translator, I will click on copy and I will just come back at uh, my scene graph and click on paste here and I will make sure to paste it in copy because that second window will not move that far, it won't move 4 meters, it will be move a bit less. So here I've moved my translator, actually I don't need all the different parts that are inside it. Here what I will do is uh, move my uh, animator at the start of that second window panel. I can already change the distance probably to something like 2.5 maybe. And I will do the same thing here, I will select my link tool, I will click on the glazing, click on the first frame and on the second frame. Now what I will do here is same thing, just making sure that my door when it's open it's at the correct position, so maybe a bit bigger, maybe something 2.7, like that, maybe 65, so we have one more space for the last window. So that's pretty much it for that second window, and now let's do that same thing for the last window, so I will copy, paste here, making sure it's in copy. Here what I will do again is just remove the different objects that are inside. I will select my link tool, click on the glazing on the first part of the framing, the second part, and I will reduce that to not even that. 1.2 maybe, 1.3, 1.3 is perfect. And now if I move my camera away, the three different parts will slide uh, close. I also need to change maybe the speed. If I move uh, like that, they will start all at the same speed. And as you can see, it doesn't look that great. So what I need to do is to select all my translators. So as you can see, there is three of them. Uh, so the first one here should be a bit slower. Let's say one dot, maybe dot two. Second one will be maybe 0 0.4. And the final one will be 0 0.5. So how, how does that look now? Yeah, it looks a bit better. Now we don't have some hole between the different uh, glazing, different between the different window. And yeah, it it went smooth. So that's how you can animate multiple parts of a window that slide open like that. Now what I want to do is show you how I can explode. I can create like a kind of diagram type of rendering with Twin Motion with also the animators tool. So here I've just switched to a more aerial shot. And what I want to do is basically select my different layer that I have in my scene graph. As you can see here, I have my roof, I have my first floor and my ground floor. And what I want to do is make those floors move a bit up in the air like that. So I can do it manually like that. And I will show you that uh, just after that how I created a kind of diagram type of images with that. But here what I want to do is actually use the animators to move the different floor up in the air. So same thing here, what I will do is select my animator. I will place it maybe just in front of my camera like that. Actually, the animator doesn't need to be close to the geometry you need to move. I'm placing my animator around this point in the space. So when I will be moving my um, camera, it can trigger actually the, uh, the animator. 
So here, making sure that the trigger zone is pretty big, so it's it's 10 meters. So when I will enter this 10 meters uh, trigger zone around my animator, it will launch the animation. So let's actually set that uh, set the, this animation up. First thing I want to do is same as before. I want the animation to play only once. I want the, the floor to move up in the air. So we'll click on once. The distance, uh, maybe let's set 20 meters. Way too, way too high. Let's say maybe 10, maybe not too. Oh no, it's bigger. Yeah, my bad. So let's let, let's indeed choose 20 meters and actually to better see what I'm doing because right now I'm just looking at this blue line. What I will do is actually place one of the floor inside this animator. So I can use like a wells. I can use my link tool and click on some geometry. But here I have already a folder that is ready. I can turn it off on and off like that. As you can see, it's the roof. What I can do is simply se select this folder and move it inside. My my translator and it will move it as a child of my translator. And as you can see now, if I move closer to my animator, it will start to move this object up in the air. So right now it's a bit uh, too uh, slow, so let me just bring up the speed. And as you can see, it's well too high, so let me maybe move it 10 meters. Actually, I also need this second, this first floor to move up in the air, so let's maybe 15 meters. That means that this first floor will be able to move 7.5 uh, meters up in the air. So right now, this is great. One thing, the second thing I want to do is do the same thing for that second floor. So what I will do here is select my translator, same thing here, copy. And I will click on paste here as a copy. I don't, again, I don't need all the children, so I will remove that second roof that has been created. And what I will do here is select my uh, first floor and move it as a child. And here, what I want to do is not 15 meters, it's 7.5. So it's tr exactly at the middle. So now what, what happened is that when my camera is getting closer to my animator, it triggers the animation. As you can see, I also need to change the speed because right now they are both going at the same speed, but my second floor needs to be uh, way slower than my uh, roof. So let's let's try five. I think it will be two. It should more. Oh, it should fit pretty nicely. And this is how you can create a, um, a explosion kind of diagram where you can have maybe let's actually place down maybe a camera. I place down the camera, I can maybe just switch a bit the focal to focus more on the project. Clicking back on refresh to remember the point of view. And now what I will do is just move the camera up in the air. And as you can see here, it's exploding the different floor. So that's pretty cool. It works for every kind of project as long as you have this nicely set up hierarchy, which is really easily, uh, which you can quickly and, and easily create inside Vectorworks. So now for the last part, I'm going to switch to another variant of that project to uh, show you uh, yeah, just a different look uh, of what you can create with Streammotion. So for that final part, I just wanted to quickly show you how I created that type of render. I know it's, it's something that we used to see in all kind of architecture competition, uh, kind of diagram type of presentation, exploded view. So here I wanted to test and see if I can do that with Twin Motion. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. So first thing I did is move, move my different floor up in the air. Let me close actually that um, that media and come closer to my project. So I move my different floor up in the air. The second thing I did is uh, I wanted to have this kind of lines that attach the different floor together. And actually, this is just a basic geometry that I grabbed from Twinmotion. It's just a basic cylinder. So I went to the primitive folder. I drag the basic cylinder, I've reduced a bit the size, again to reduce, to switch to the scale gizmo you can use tab to switch from the move to rotate to scale tool or you can click, hold your mouse and switch to the scale manually over here. 
So I just changed the scale uh, on all axes like that by clicking on the middle uh, little uh, square on the middle little cube. And then what I did is just move up in the air and just scale on one axis like that to make sure it touch my second floor. So here I basically created those lines everywhere around my project. Then the next step was to hide the vegetation. I still wanted to keep them in case I need them for another view, but in my specific view I didn't want any vegetation. So I took all my three assets. Uh, let me actually just select one so I can see where it is. Let me come back to my image. I simply selected my trees. And while they were selected, inside my viewport, I clicked on the little refresh button to memorize the state hide and unhide of the object on this specific view. So for example, let's say that this was my original view with some trees. So we'll just simply select the different tree I want to add in my, in my scene. I will come back to my media, making sure I select all of them. And I will just uh, first hide them, clicking on the eye icon over here, and I will click on the refresh button to memorize the state hidden of this object. Then the last step was simply to drag and drop a couple of white material on the side of my project. To do that, you click on the material picker, you select any of the material of your project to bring that uh, materials dock. Then if you want to create your own material, you can click on this uh, material single multi icon. You can click on this plus. This will create a new material, which is by default white. And I simply drag and drop that white material onto my project. And that's it. That's pretty much it. The last part was to actually set up the camera. To do that, uh, let me actually uh, create the same camera again. So I will create, create a new image. I will click on the plus. In the settings of that image, I click on the more at the bottom right corner of the thumbnail. Here I went to the camera and I just changed the focal of my camera to something as small as possible. As you can see here to have this kind of isometric type of view. Then what I did is also make sure that the shadow is casted uh, well uh, long enough. So in some case you can see your project looking like that. It's because you need to move the camera far away to have a really small focal. And sometimes the shadow distance is um, not casted uh, long enough. So you need to manually change this value. So here 400 meters was fine. And what I also like to do in this kind of project is in this kind of render is just change the ambient lighting just so your project is uh, have less dark shadow and uh, changing maybe a bit the white balance to have a, a bit um, of a yellowish tint. And same thing here, uh, as you can see here, I created a new image. So my trees are back. Uh, a simple way is to select them manually one at a time like that in the viewport, but a faster way would be to actually use the filter in the scene graph. So here I will click on all, I will select vegetation. So here I have say I have basically only visible in my scene graph only the trees and the painted vegetation. So I selected everything, came back into my media, click on the eye icon to hide everything, and now I can safely click on the refresh icons to memorize that all the tree needs to be hidden in this specific camera. And that's how I created this quick view. And I think that's it for this webinar. Hope you find that uh, helpful. And thank you so much for joining us today for this presentation. Thank you, Jonathan, for being with us today. And now I think we can have, uh, yeah, we have a bit of time to take some questions. So let's jump onto the live Q&A.